After the hard and fast circuit of the previous day, the peloton of the Women's World Tour was in a relaxed mood at the start of Stage 2 of the tour of Chongming Island. With another fast finish expected, challenging the overall lead of Chloe Hoskin was high in the mind of her sprinting rivals. As some tended to the wounds of Stage 1, others took the chance to enjoy the warm Chinese welcome. We're trying to, you know, enjoy the the environment, which is different from every, uh, from yeah, you know, the other World Two races, and it's really special. And we hope for today to have a nice day, like the beginning of the day. <laughs> it was a pretty big crash because all the girls went on top of me, and uh, I was just lying uh, on the bottom of the pile. And uh, yeah, luck luckily I'm nothing broken. My shape is good and my legs are good, so I just have to to wait and see how my body will react in the race and then uh, we have to decide whether we go for Nettie or for me. I think there's other teams like Silence, like Wiggle, that want the um, intermediate sprint seconds. So I, I feel like we actually won't have to do that much work today. We want a bunch of sprint because you can't afford to give somebody like even 30 seconds. So for sure a bunch sprint and um, I'm sure there's a lot of other teams that want the same scenario. <laughs> Of stage two's 135 kilometers, the first 30 would play out on the roads of Changxing Island, before heading north and returning to the more familiar surroundings of Chongming. To get there though, the riders would have to tackle the 16 and a half kilometer Yangtze Bridge. With Queen of the Mountains points available at the bridge's halfway point, five riders set their aim. Among those was Wiggle High Five's Lucy Garner, who outbattled Ale Cipollini's Soraya Paladin to take the points and, at the end of the day, the polka dot jersey. The first major move of the day would come from Mint Cycling Club's Marina Shauchenska, nearly 50 kilometres into the race, launching an attack shortly after Chloe Hoskin had claimed the day's first intermediate sprint. And the Belarusian would enjoy the open roads on her own for some time, but with the day's final intermediate sprint up ahead, those wanting to reduce Hosking's GC lead weren't about to let her escape. An onrushing door and Christina Seagard catching and passing the escapee mere metres from the line. With the bunch all back together, a flurry of attacks would define the next 35 kilometres and would give a taste of what was to come in the race's finale. Inside the last 10k, a double effort from Serveto Justa, first by Natalia Sokovnina and then by Ksenia Dobrynina, with Orica Scott doing the work to shut them down. With the sprinters' teams now firmly back in control, lead-out trains began to form, with high-tech products the first to hit the front. Within the Flamme Rouge, they'd been joined by Ale Cipollini and Wiggle High Five. And for the latter, Annette Edmondson would deliver the perfect lead-out for Jolien Dorr, whose long sprint would be too strong for the fast-finishing Kirsten Vield. Anna Zita Maria Stricker of BTC City Ljubljana would pip Hosking to a surprise final podium place. But it was Wiggle High Five who had the most to celebrate, as Dor claimed the stage and the overall race lead. I did the first intermediate and I got third, so that wasn't too bad. And then uh, I tried again on the second intermediate sprint and uh, I won it. So uh, then I said to the team, yeah, let's do a full lead out for, uh, for the final sprint. And uh, I'm so happy they, they gave me the chance and uh, they trusted me, um, despite my crash yesterday. And I'm so happy I could finish it off for them. In the final sprint, I had really good help by Raquela and uh, Shaila. And then in the, I think in the last corner, I took the, the train of Cipollini. And then, uh, well, it was really close with Jolina, I think, in the end. It will be a difficult uh, game, but yeah, it's also clear we have to take the seconds in the intermediate sprints and in the final. So that's the, that's the goal. <laughs> it's always a little bit um, dangerous in this kind of sprints, but it was like really chaotic. And so I just was on the wheel from Dodd and I don't know what I, what I did today because I'm not a super sprinter, so I'm just happy. Outside of the day's top three, Ale Cipollini had a trio of top ten finishers in Hosking, Marta Bastianelli and Anna Trevisi. While 20-year-old Maria Vittoria Sparotto continues to impress with a seventh place finish as she holds on to her white jersey. In the overall standings, Seagard of Team Velo Concept and BTC City Ljubljana's Jelena Erich are the two new faces in the top ten 
But it's Dor who heads into the final stage in yellow, with Veeld and Hosking likely to be her most dangerous challengers on the final day.